the dynamics of the coaching uh, community is also something that's not talked about very much at all. Um, I was surprised after I got into coaching um, just how easy it was. Um, like people's standards were really low. Like I was really nervous before I started coaching. Um, I had one hour to give people um, value. Like what happens if I don't give people value in that time? I was really nervous. And from the very start, I got very positive feedback. Um, while at the same time, really doubting that I was actually giving people that much value in return. Um, eventually, like I built myself up, I got a lot better, and I uh, uh, like really think um, like in the tail end of my career and uh, like fast track, I gave people absurd amount of, of value for for not very much money, and I'm very proud of that. Um, but at the same time, like at the very start, it was really easy for me to make money in that field, even without like having. Um, like being very good at it. Like based on how good I am now, or at least how good I was when I was in the uh, thick of coaching, um, really makes me wonder how I was able to get away with it when I wasn't very good at all. Um, one thing that I think really um, is indicative about this is the fact that you will never see negative reviews for an established coach, almost never. And when you do, it's a big deal. And that's a problem. That is a sign of a rigged market. Um, because I promise you that coaching is not this absurdly undervalued thing in the poker community where everyone who has it um, realizes that they have uh, made a ton of more money from it and it was definitely the right decision from them and their coach was definitely good. Um, we don't call out bad coaches. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't post negative reviews for coaches when we don't think they've done well. We just don't post anything at all. And you have to guess based on someone's coaching thread or whatever um, how many positives and just how positive their reviews are um, rather than saying like someone say, yeah, I don't really think I get the value for this one, but I appreciate the hour or something like that. That's something that you'll just never say because people's incentives aren't set up that way. Um, because essentially it's a reputation attack, um, which is what we were talking about before. Um, these re reputation attacks can't happen lightly, and because of that, people back way off. Um, you'll notice a lot of the same things in the real estate world. And uh, let me show you what I mean. This is the real estate market on Yelp. Heather and Nina are fantastic rock stars. Here's a, here's a real person, has their name in the top of their thread. Perfect reviews, some random companies. Okay, random mediocre reviews. Here's another random person, perfect reviews. Look at that fine looking gentleman. Another random person, perfect reviews. Good old Tiffany, uh, Mark Jack, perfect reviews, 10 out of 10. Trust me, realtors are not, like, it's, a, it's a, an industry where your incentives are completely misaligned with the realtor's incentives in a lot of circumstances. I know because I just got an apartment, had to go through two different realtors first before getting to the third that actually had my interest at the heart. Um, and you get these rigged markets where it's not okay to give negative feedback. And that's kind of what we have in coaching. Um, you're destroying someone's career if you uh, write negative feedback about them. Um, you're calling someone out who's probably higher in the poker world than you because that's why you're getting coaching from them. Um, it's just not a good situation. Um, and we have people who uh, presumably have built themselves up in the commu poker community. Um, like it's a, We'll find it's much easier to tear down coaches who haven't been um, in the community for longer, um, even though there are plenty of coaches that have been in the poker community long um, and are just as, as, as mediocre of coaches and don't have a bad word said about them. Um, so that's kind of what I'm talking about. And I'll admit that some of this is perhaps just my ethical opinions and people may differ on, on uh, their ethical perspective. Um, some of it is more black and white, but some of it is more gray. Um, for example, okay, so the live sweat problem. Um, live sweats um, are generally acknowledged, I don't think I'm stepping out of bounds here, um, from, from people as not being a particularly helpful form of coaching, um, but yet they're really liked by students in a lot of circumstances. Um, so is it um, unethical to provide something, someone with something they want, um, a live sweat, um, even if it is not helping them um, as much. And I think in general, no, it's, it's, it's not unethical. Like it's, you, it's just market, like the market will correct. Who are you to say what people should want? Um, if people want live sweats as their form of coaching, that's fine. Um, like they're, you're just giving them what they're willing to pay for. Um, but at the same time, um, 
it gets weird is all I'll say. It gets weird uh, when these coaches are making a living off of giving mediocre coaching in a form of coaching that's not particularly helpful and advertising in a completely different way, even if they know that like, it's, it's not actually the most helpful form of coaching. Um, are you obligated to say, like, do you really want live sweats? Because I think this might be more helpful to you. Uh, maybe not. Uh, but at the same time, you get these weird incentive combinations uh, that, I, that made me uncomfortable a little bit.